important day for this video series because we're going to learn one of the very most important, most basic principles of lighting. Now, there are a couple of challenges here. The challenge for you is that we're going to be photographing shiny metal. The challenge for me is that this principle sounds a little bit intimidating. It's called the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Now, I hope I haven't lost you already. It really is simpler than it sounds. Let's take a look. So I have a flashlight here to help illustrate the principle. What the principle tells us is that the angle of incidence, which is the angle the light comes from the flashlight and hits the surface, is the same as the angle of reflectance, the angle that it comes off of the surface. That never changes. At no time is this light ever going to hit this surface and go straight up or bounce off to the right or the left. We can count on it always doing exactly the same thing, and that is understanding light. Now, it's understanding this principle that allows professional photographers to move the lights around to exactly where they want them to achieve the effect that they want, to bring out certain details in a product or a person, or to kind of mask certain details in a product or a person. This is something you really have to know if you want to take control of your lighting. So for today's challenge, I've chosen this shiny metal cheese grater. It's metal and shiny on all sides. It's going to be a real reflection problem. Let's see how to handle this using the principle we discussed. So this is our set. We have our cheese grater pointed straight at the front of the set. We have the camera. It's down just a little bit low, a little bit below the set, pointing up with a wide-angle lens. This is such a fun shape. I thought we'd create a little drama, have a little fun with it. Then we have our strobe unit here just above the camera. Now what's going to happen here is we're going to have the strobe unit shooting straight at the cheese grater. It's going to hit that metal and that light is going to reflect straight back into the lens. We're going to get some massive glare. Let's take a look. Yep, that's exactly what's happened. So how do we eliminate that? Well, we could move the strobe from side to side. We could change its location, but I'm going to be turning the cheese grater anyway because I want to get a more dynamic angle on it. What's going to happen now is the light's going to travel from the strobe to the metal surface and then it's going to glance off at the same angle that, that it met the surface. So that glare is no longer going to kick back into the camera. It's going to glance off to the side. It's going to go off into space. We're never going to see the glare. So let's take a look at what we get now. Well, we don't have a problem with glare, but boy, there's no light on the product, so what do we do? We can increase the power of this strobe about three stops. Let's go ahead and try that and take another shot. Well, that sure didn't do it. Uh, we still don't have any detail in the metal. Now, what have we learned here? Well, we're seeing one of the very basic principles about photographing shiny metal. It's just like photographing a mirror. You can pump all the light you want into a mirror, but do you ever actually see the surface of the mirror? No, you just see what's reflected in it. It's the same way with this metal. We're going to have to create reflections, nice reflections, and that's what we're going to see. That's what's going to define the metal to us. So the reflections we'll create will be with these white foam core cards. We want to make sure that the cards have a clean surface because they're going to be reflecting in the metal just like a mirror. Now, how do I know where to put this card? It's the exact same thing, the angle of incidence, the angle of reflection. I follow the path from the camera lens to the metal, and then where it bounces off, that's the path I want to put this card into. It looks good for just doing a quick card up there. I think we have that side covered. Let's go to the other side. So that's not bad for just putting a couple of cards in a photograph very quickly. We've gotten decent results with very little effort here. Now one other thing that I'm going to do just for fun is I see that the handle disappears into the background just a bit. The handle is dark, so is the background. I'm going to take a grid spot and shine just a spot on the background to create a little separation. That's something we would do in a commercial application. And there we go. So that's it, a complicated sounding principle that in actual use is really pretty simple. Just think of it as playing pool. You knock that pool ball into the bumper, it comes off of that bumper at the exact same angle it hits it. Unless you're a much better pool player than I and you can put spin on it. You can't put spin on light as far as I know. So what are the other practical applications of this? Well, 
this principle is used in every single thing you photograph. But think of food photography. Think of the shiny surface on the top of soup. That's a reflection. Think of the sizzle, the glisten on steak. That's the same thing. Think of the shine on a person's hair. That uses the exact same principles. So these are principles that carry forward in everything we photograph. As always, I hope this video has been a help. If you would like to see the still photographs that were created during the video, just come to ProPhotoLife.com, look up Video Episode 15, and you'll find a gallery of the images there. Thanks again for watching. I hope to see you again next time. So you get a close-up. I get the close-up.